Hello, and welcome to this video presentation on the SNOMED International Browser Snapshot API. My name is Peter Williams, and I'm a technical specialist with SNOMED International. So we're going to start here on our GitHub page. And the first repository we've got pinned here is the Snapshot REST API, which we use to drive the browser front end. There's our terminology browser, browser.ihtstotools.org. And if you were to bring up the developer toolbar here, which on a Mac you can do pressing Alt, Command, and I, and look at the network tab, then if we were to type something into the search bar, you'll see that API call being made. So in this video, I'm really just going to look at the API itself. I'm not going to go into the code, and I'm not going to look at any specific use cases, although I will cover this in later videos. So if you scroll down in the GitHub window, the readme file is displayed in markup language, and you'll see that if you wanted to implement this API on your own server, you'd need a mean stack, Node.js, Express, and Mongo database. And we're also providing Docker configuration, which is detailed below. So looking at the API documentation, which is also listed in GitHub, there are a number of endpoints for recovering information about a concept, its children, its parents, and any ref sets that it might be a member of. You can also do a textual search, which is the call we saw being made in the browser window earlier. And there's a list of all releases which are available. So we'll go through each of these in turn. Fortunately, the documentation page makes it fairly easy to just copy a URL. And we can paste that into a browser window. Fortunately, all of the calls in this API use the HTTP GET method. And so I can just paste them directly into the address bar of the browser. Some of our other services accept parameters via a POST request, and in this case I might use an application such as Postman to help me make the call. So here you can see the API has returned information about the concept I've requested, but it's quite difficult to read. So I'd recommend you get hold of an extension called JSON View or something similar, and I'll switch that on, and then re-request the page. And that's formatted that nicely for me. So here you can see we have objects for RefSet membership, descriptions, including language RefSet acceptability, which means they don't appear in the RefSet membership object above, stated and inferred relationships, and that will probably be enhanced with an additional object containing AL axioms in the near future. The definition status, the fully specified name, the effective time, and the module. So if we wanted information about another concept, we just have to change the SCT ID in the URL. I looked up a concept earlier, and I don't know if you've seen this icon before, but it allows you to copy the concept ID or the concept and term together. I just need the concept ID just now. Which I'll paste into the URL. And there's the other concept I'm interested in. Now, let's say I'm interested in the descendants, or children of that concept. I just need to add slash children to the URL and indicate the type of relationship I'm interested in, in this case inferred. So there are the immediate children returned. And I could parse this JSON to pull out individual concept IDs and make further requests to find additional information about those concepts. Similarly, if I wanted to find the parents, I just need slash parents on the end of the URL. Of course, in a poly hierarchy, a concept could have many parents. I think the record there is about 15 inferred parents. Let me find that one. So since language ref set entries aren't included in the members endpoint, 
Probably the most useful thing this endpoint could be used for is for looking up historical associations. So where a concept has been inactivated, it might have been replaced by, or marked as a duplicate, of some other active concept. So since I've been working on the drug project recently, we'll have a look for an inactive clinical drug. We know that's inactive because it's pink. So I'll grab that SCT ID. Now we can see that the active flag is set to false. And in fact, the concept endpoint shows us the historical relationships as well. So this inactive concept is possibly equivalent to product containing methyl cellulose 450, oral tablet. This is one of the new drugs concepts created recently, which has a much more specific FSN. So that's the historical association. There's also an attribute value reference set, which lists the inactivation indicator. And you can see that this concept's been inactivated because it's ambiguous. By contrast, the members endpoint can be used for looking up the contents of a particular reference set. So the SCT ID here should be the identifier for a reference set concept, like the concept inactivation indicator attribute value reference set. Now I know there are nearly 100,000 of these, so I'm going to limit it to the first 10. And there you can see the first 10 concepts that are inactive will have a historical association, but we'll have to drill down on the detail of that concept to find out what it's associated with. So this endpoint is more useful in terms of determining membership of simple reference sets. And there you can see that our concept is possibly equivalent to however you pronounce that. You could also make your own call to the search endpoint. As you can see, there are an awful lot of options there. So probably the best way to work out how that works is try it in the browser itself and see what calls get made. Now the last endpoint is interesting and might be quite useful to you because it's not always obvious what effective date to put into the URL and SNOMED International only usually have the latest release in the browser. So you can recover a list of the releases that are in the browser and determine programmatically that in this case 2018-01-31 is the effective time that should be included in your URLs. So that's the last endpoint in the Snapshot REST API, and that brings us to the end of this video presentation. Thank you very much for watching.